In this video, I would like to share with you a simple technique in AutoCAD using which we can create multiple copies of an object along a path. The technique is called Path Arrays. Let this represent a balcony. And this is a baluster. I have created this baluster by making a profile using a polyline, then I have revolved that profile about a vertical axis. You can refer my video on revolve command if you don't have any idea about this command. Now, I would like to create multiple copies of this baluster along this path, which I have created by drawing a polyline profile over here. Then I have offset that polyline through a distance of 5 cm. Now, I change my representation to realistic. I'll go to path array command. It's available in the home tab. You have various types of arrays. I hope you are already familiar with rectangular and polar arrays. And I'll just click on the path array. Now it will ask you to select the object to be arrayed. I will select the baluster. Then it will ask you to select the path curve. This is the path curve. And I will just click that path curve. Now you have got the multiple copies but it is not following the path curve properly. That is because you have to edit certain parameters related with the path array. Now let me close this array. Ok. Now if you want to edit the array, just click on the array object. Then you will see various options appearing in the ribbon. I'll click on the base point option. Now you can change the base point of the array. I want the center point of the bottom face as the base point. So I'll just click on that point. The moment you click there, you will see that all the balusters will get automatically aligned along the path. The path arrays can be created using divide method and measure method. In divide method, the objects will get equally distributed along the path depending upon the number of items specified here. While in the measure method, you can control the distance between individual items over here and based on that distance, the number of items are automatically created along the path. Now I'll use the measure method of array creation. So I'll click on measure and I'll change the distance between individual items to 17.5 centimeters. Now you can see that the change is reflected here. If you want, you can control the number of levels in this array. That means presently there is only a single level. If I want, I can go for two levels. So you have got a level on top. Suppose when you work on a multi storied apartment project, in that case you can have as many levels as you want and the distance between each level you can control here. I don't want that. I need only a single level. So I'll bring it back to one. Now I just want to close my array. So I'll just click on close array to complete it. Now, let me complete the balcony by creating a handrail on top. So, I'll switch over to wireframe representation and I'll copy this polyline which I have created on the bottom to the top. So, I'll go to copy command and I'll select this polyline and I'll choose this as a base point and second point is at a distance of 65 cm from the base point. And I'll create a profile using a circle command and I'll use center radius method. This is a center and the radius is 4 cm and I'll take copy command. Just take a copy of the circle onto the bottom and I'll trim the circle. Okay, and I'll join these profiles as a single profile using the join command. I'm going to perform the sweep operation. So I'm going to sweep this profile along this path. So I'll click on sweep. When I'm asked to select the object to sweep, I'll select this profile. They'll give an enter. And when I'm asked to select the sweep path, I'll click on this path. This is how it will appear. Now, let me switch over to realistic representation and I'll orbit the model to see my completed balcony. This model looks like a realistic balcony. Hence, path arrays gives tremendous flexibility in creating multiple copies of an object along a path curve. And this path curve is nothing but a predefined path created by the user. Next, we will see another interesting example of path arrays. This is a 3D model of a residence. I would like to keep a number of plants by the side of this pathway. I have a 3D model of a plant over here. So I'll insert this plan into this file. I'll click on insert tab and I'll select insert and I'll browse that particular drawing. And name of the drawing is plant one. I'll give open and OK. I'm going to insert it right here. Next I'll create a polyline path along which the array is to be created. So I'll click on polyline. And I'll start from here. Then I'll click on a point over here. Then I'll right click and I'll go to arc option. Then I'll right click again and I'll select a second point. I'll pick a point somewhere over here as a second point. And this is the end point. 
Okay, so I have traced that arc. Then I'll come back to line mode. So right click and click on line because the next segment is a linear segment and click on a point over here, then right click, then go to arc option, then right click again and go to second point. And you pick a point as second point somewhere over here. Then you select uh, this point as the end point. The next segment is linear segment. So right click, go to line and you select uh, this as the end point and this as the end point to complete the polyline. So we have made the path along which this object is to be arrayed. Next, I'll go to the path array command and uh, select the object to be arrayed. Then just give an enter by right clicking. Then it'll ask you to select the path curve. Path curve is nothing but the polyline which I have drawn just now. Just give a click to select that polyline. Now you can see that it has made uh, multiple copies but it is all scattered. That is because you haven't specified the base point properly. So I'll just close this array for the time being and I'll click on this array again. Okay. Then you go to base point option just as we have done before and you select this center as the base point. Now you can see that it's properly aligned along the path curve. Next, we will click on the array and you can see a grip over here. You can change the distance between individual objects in this path array. For that, just click and drag on this grip using the mouse. Now you can see that you have changed the distance manually or else you can control the distance by inputting precise values. This is where you do that. So I'll change the value from 125 to 90. Okay, now the distance got changed. Next, I want to resize these items. Suppose you feel that the size of each plant is big, then you can reduce the size of this plant by selecting the array. Then I click on edit source option, then you select an item in the array. Just give OK. Next, I'll just click on the scale command and you scale this object with this as the base point. I'll click this bottom point as the base point. When I'm asked to give the scale factor, I'll give say 0.7 because I want to reduce the size of each plant by 30%. So the moment you change it here, you will see the changes getting reflected on all the objects in this array because it's an associative array. All the objects are interconnected. Next, I'll just click on edit array button and click on save changes. This is how you change the size of an individual object to see it getting reflected on rest of the objects. Now, I feel like I want to get rid of these three items. I want to remove these three plants because it is just the entrance of the house. When you click on an array object, you can see that all the objects in the array will get selected. But in this context, I want to select only these three plants. So just hold on the control key and make a click. Uh, that particular plan got selected. Then you again control click and control click. Now you can just go to erase tool and erase those three items. So this is how you can individually select objects in an associative array. Now, whenever you want to bring those objects back, all you have to do is just select the array and you just click on reset array button and you can get those erased objects back. Now I'll just undo this uh, reason operation I have done. Now I'll restore a saved view. So I'll give view command and I'll select V1. This is a perspective view which was saved beforehand and click on set current button and apply and OK. Now you can see uh, these plans in perspective. If you need any clarifications on creating different types of perspectives, if you want to get more information on perspectives, please refer my exclusive video on this topic. Hope this video has given you some vital informations and understanding on a very interesting topic in AutoCAD that is path arrays. Thanks for your time.